EA Sports coverage of the NFL has us at the foot of the Rockies, just west of downtown Denver at Empower Field at Mile High. Just a short time ago, sounds loud enough to reverberate across the Rockies. They're ready for football in Denver as the Broncos get set to do battle with the Baltimore Ravens. And Denver getting set to take the field. down and the Raven pressure too much down he goes Calais Campbell finding his way home for the sack that's called setting the tone right away it certainly is and it lets you know just how important communication is amongst the offensive line they talk about it all the time knowing each other's moves you've got to be coordinated and in sync otherwise your quarterback gets hit They'll run for the first time with Phillip Lindsay. And they won't fare much better here as he maybe gets back to the line. No gain on the play this time, and it'll be a third and long situation coming up. Third down and a quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing with their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. This is the tight end fan. It's a gain of six, but not enough, as he'll be forced to punt on their first drive of the game. There's an example of good situational football being played by a defense. They understood where the third down play was, the down and distance, and made sure that they didn't get anywhere near that, bringing up fourth down. Yeah, they were sniffing out that marker, didn't want to let him get close to there, and now a likely three and out to start. Yeah, I love the way they rallied to the football and got to him and made sure he didn't give up much run after catch. That'll be a 44-yard boot, just a yard on the return as he's covered up quickly. And the Ravens, they'll take over. The Ravens offense back out there. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their 35-yard line. And from the shotgun, he'll throw. Caught by Snead over the middle. Jackson. That catch good for only a couple. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. From the gun, it's Jackson. Quick slant to Brown. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Three tight ends in the ball game here on first and ten. And the former Heisman winner, this is Mark Ingram. And he's got it across midfield and into Denver territory. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. Jack, and he'll get it down here to the 43. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. And what a weapon to have when you can use your quarterback as a short yardage runner and pick up first downs. They show run with three tight ends here on first down. They run. It's Mark Ingram. Mark Ingram. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front. Because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. From the 41, Jackson in a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Bryce Callahan. 
And they are going to set up shop at the 32-yard line. The Broncos take over first and 10. They'll start on the ground with Lindsey. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. Block working out of the gun. This one complete to Jerry Judy. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. The big gainer there on the catch and run, 37 yards. One of the first big plays we've seen in this football game, and could that be the play that gets this game jump-started? It's taken a while as both teams have tried to settle in. Maybe now the pace will accelerate. So the big play gets them all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Lock on the give, it's Lindsey. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, you gotta like the way they're moving the football partner. Absolutely, pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. They'll run here with Lindsey. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it leads to a first and goal. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. From the eight, they've got it first and goal. From the gun, it's locked. And this is taken in by Hamler for a Bronco touchdown. Eight yards on the touchdown pass as his guys are first out of the scoreboard here this afternoon. And he's a little bit on the shorter side as a receiver. Maybe sometimes for the defense, tough to find the little guys, right? Yeah, sometimes they get lost in the traffic, but usually what it means is that rather than just winning with height or even speed, they use their quickness to find a way to get open. Well, tall, short, wide, skinny, whatever. There it results in a touchdown. in the end zone and Hill will opt for the touchback Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game they had the interception last time it led to the opening touchdown so now seven nothing the score as they start first and ten Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. He'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. Now, how about that play? He took a possible negative and turned it into positive yardage and slid down to avoid taking a big shot. Excellent job getting down and avoiding the big hit. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. This is Ingram. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy, let him pick up the first down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Jackson fakes the give and keeps it. 
two yards the gain on the keeper, and it's second down. And if you like defensive football, focus on the defensive end on this play. He does everything exactly right. Reads the play and makes sure he spills it for a small gain. Second and eight coming up. Here's Ingram. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. You don't see that a ton, do you, with a cornerback coming over to the middle of the field to make a run tackle? That's someone with a ton of confidence to feel like nothing is pressuring him on his side of the field. Sees that the ball is moved to the middle and just sprints over there to help out. He ends up getting the tackle. Well played. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Vaughn Miller in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that will lead to fourth down. And it's fourth down. So on fourth down, here's Sam Cook to punt it away. And Denver has Deontay Spencer deep to return. He'll send this one into the mile high air, and it's a good one. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And the Broncos take over, first down and 10. Set to take over, the Broncos offense trots back out. Things progressing to plan so far. Their defense has been solid, and they've got themselves a 7-0 lead after the touchdown the last time they had the ball. And this is no time to even think about, hey, are we going to milk the clock? Hey, are we just going to do ball control? This is the NFL. 7-0 leads, they don't last very long unless you continue to push the envelope on offense. And his throw here is incomplete. K.J. Hamler, the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. Throwing again. Lock out quickly to Judy. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Came up a little short on the last pass play. They did get nine yards out of it, leaving him with his third and one. And that's knocked away and incomplete. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. Here's Sam Martin now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Ravens will get it. First and 10 from deep in their own territory. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And in a spot like this, still more than a minute, I think if you put something on the board before halftime, that would go a long way towards helping them get back into the game. There actually is something to the psychology of the game at times, isn't there? How much better would they feel running into the locker room, as you noted, with something on the board in a positive fashion? You're exactly right. It's a great opportunity to get that done. Call that a very strong gain of 24. Thus far, it hasn't been a real fun half for them, but a play like that, that may get them off the schneid a little bit, get them loosened up and moving. Kind of seems like they've been sleepwalking and still sitting on zero points. And it's not always making an adjustment. Sometimes it's just going back to what you know can work and finally getting it done. From up near the 40 now after the big play to start. Here's another first and 10. Jackson from the shotgun. Looking left side, Andrews with it complete. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. From the gun, Jackson. 
He's going to take off with it. He's got a first down and then some inside the 40 and down to the 28-yard line. 27 yards there, a first down. Partner, it's often the man coverage is easier for a quarterback to run against. You get your receivers going downfield. Those guys are staying with them, and oftentimes they have their back to the quarterback, which opens up a lot of space and room, and they don't even know that he's taken off with it. What a big-time pickup on that play. Buying time to his left. He's going to take off with it, and he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. So many times we talk about having good eye discipline when you're playing defense, making sure your eyes are in the proper place on a given play. Looks like that discipline came to the front there, didn't it? They were able to hold him for a short gain when he took off running. To throw again on second down. Jackson caught right side at Snead. Jackson. Ravens going to use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. Took nearly the entire first half, but a first red zone opportunity for him here. They've got a first and 10 at the 15. Eluding the pressure right. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. A seven-yard pickup. Brings up so we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As now we send you out to Orlando and hook back up with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Broncos with a lead, and they will be receiving this kickoff here as quarter three is underway. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They come out here with a zero on the scoreboard. What was said in that locker room? That's what I want to know. I would love to have been in there because we often have the feeling that there's a lot of shouting, screaming, people upset. But typically, halftime locker rooms are a lot more clinical than that. And in this case... Are they upset that the plays weren't working because of execution? Or did they think just they were just bad plays to call? Yeah. We'll find out pretty quickly here if they felt like they had something going, but they just need to do it a little bit better or not. We'll find out. Well, I tell you, there is no antidote for speed, even at the quarterback position, as he keeps it himself and turns it into good yardage. And it still takes time for a defender to react, even as quarterbacks carry the ball more and more in today's NFL. They're still a little bit in disbelief and realize, oh my goodness, he's running with the ball. He may be 8, 10, 12 yards downfield at that point. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. First down. That certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Marquise Brown was the intended target, and now it's second down. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. To throw again. Jackson back to Brown this time complete and this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos 33 just his second catch of the game so far this one moves the chains I don't know what they talked about at halftime whatever it was it worked they look like a different team here in the third quarter yeah I doubt that they're very many trash cans that got kicked over that type of a speech I think what they did was they analyzed what worked in the first half what didn't and figured out a better game plan over the middle complete that's ingram and he's brought down but not before he reaches the eight yard line a really nice gain of 25 yards but look what we have here a sustained drive and that was certainly a wall in the first half they really struggled to try and move the football but right now they certainly seem to have the formula working let's see if they can keep it up And they'll try the option on first and goal. And he is into the end zone for a Baltimore touchdown. Touchdown. Lamar Jackson keeping it himself from eight yards out. And the Ravens are an extra point away from tying the football game.
Well, that was all Lamar Jackson all the time on that drive, both through the air and in the end with the touchdown run. Yeah, how about him doing things a little bit on the reverse side there, Brandon, because he softened him up throwing the football and opened up the running lanes. And when he gets a little bit of a sliver, he's gone. And that's exactly what he did there. Just so a tie ball game here as the kick's away. To return it, here's Deontay Spencer. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. So now a look at the Broncos as they head back out there for their first possession of the second half. And their lead has evaporated in this third quarter. It's tied once more as they begin with a first and 10. The drive will commence with a run by Lindsey. And he'll work free from one tackle, but that's about all as he's taken down. Linebacker Patrick Queen bringing him down. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Shotgun snap to lock. He'll get this to Philip Lindsay complete. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Well, that was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that? Second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. 1st and 10, it's Lindsey. And able to get a couple as he's across the 40 to the 41. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. The last run good for two. Here's 2nd and 8. Operating from the gun. Lock. He's got his big tight end fan. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. You don't always expect tight ends to be big in terms of run after the catch, but after that play, he joins a growing band of players that's putting that stereotype right on its ear. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day. One score game. First and ten here. Oh, jumping early from his tight end spot. Maybe trying to get a jump start on that route. Yeah, I think you're exactly right about that. And oftentimes when you see that, that means the play call was supposed to come in his direction, and he was eager to go catch a pass. The full start backs him up five. First and 15. <laughs> A run with Lindsey out of the gun. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. So now they operate back from their side of the field here. Second and long. From the gun. Lock. Open man, he completes it to Judy. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. In today's football, where receivers break tackles, make people miss, <laughs> get upfield for the extra yardage, when you see a play like that where it's caught and he's dropped on the spot, that's a big-time play by the defense. Third and two, Locke's going to throw. Fine work by the Baltimore defense to help bring up fourth down. Three quarters have come and gone. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Welcome back now to Denver. 7-7 is our score. Pretty even matchup so far as we start quarter number four. 
a 53-yard attempt. That's leaking to the right, and he missed it by a foot or two. It's no good, and a costly one there as this game remains tied here in the fourth. What a tough spot to miss a kick. Just an absolute letdown. Look, they got themselves in the field goal range, gave them a chance to take the lead. They come up empty, and now you wonder, will their offense ever see the football again? Yeah, because on the other side, one through the post, and this thing could be over. They'll start with the option. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. A big time gain there on the keeper, using his legs to hurt him. First down. So this play, you know, until recently, only something you'd probably expect to see in a college game, but running quarterbacks are certainly in vogue, and this turned into a big play. And you and I both know that for a long time, coaches worried about their quarterbacks taking too much punishment, running plays like this, and they still worry about it. But when you can break up big chunks of yardage like that, it's worth the risk, plus you're coaching that quarterback to see those guys coming and get down before the big hit occurs. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. On second down now, it's Ingram. And here he'll get it down to the seven. That leads us to a first and goal. It's a pickup of eight. Yeah, once more, strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. A field goal could get him the lead, but it might not be enough here as they come up on first and goal. And now Jackson will look to throw it. They'll roll him out right. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. Touchdown. Lamar Jackson, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Ravens have taken the lead. So the lanes continue to be there for Lamar Jackson to run that football. That his second touchdown run of the game. You know what I would like? I'd like for us to be able to go into a defense's room after playing Lamar Jackson and watch the tape and see how much of a lane was really there and how much he created just through his talents. In any event, Lamar Jackson finds the end zone, doesn't he? He always seems to, but that's a good point. We sometimes put blame on the defense. Maybe we just need to praise Lamar Jackson a little bit more. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And this will make it into the end zone. And Spencer will elect to not bring it out here. It's a touchback. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. And now after the touchdown a moment ago, they work from behind in a seven-point game in this fourth quarter. Plenty of time on the clock. Lock and the Broncos going to come up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. He'll set up to throw from the gun. That's going to be caught by Judy. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 16 yards right off the bat and a first down. This defense has certainly had an outstanding second half, haven't they? I know they just gave up a first down there and for the offense, they're hoping that that's something that they can jumpstart with and maybe start to move the ball a little bit better. But it's been tough sledding for them here the entire second half. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. That time he was looking for Jerry Judy, but it'll be second down. I think that was good strategy there, trying to go right back to him after the last completion, but this time, the defense was all over him, and they got there to break that one up. Here now is second and 10, again from the 41. Throwing again, Lock. And the pressure will get to him. He goes down. 
Now there is a flag on the play, but this looks like holding on the offense. So following the holding call, what can they do here on third and long? Operating from the gun. Lock. He dumps it underneath here to Lindsey. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. And looking up into the sun, he's able to make the fair catch inside the 20-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And that will come the offense as they take over. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 17-yard line. The drive will start with an option going left. Yeah, he was able to shed one tackle, but could not get away from there. Two yards the gain on the keeper, and it's second down. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up in the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. This, in all probability, another run here on second and eight. They'll try to run some clock with Ingram. And not a whole lot to speak of there as they'll bring him down shy of the 20. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. This is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Jackson to throw. And he's got him. Got his man on the end route. Complete. Whistles now and a timeout. So defensively, they burn it here with 1.51 left. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. Now the Broncos will use their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Ingram again. And he'll get this up to about the 40. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. You can really tell right now both sides have amped up the aggressiveness. That time the offense winning the aggression battle. And the defense was obviously aiming for the football, maybe a little bit more so than the runner himself, and that's why he was able to break through and get the gain that he did. So here we go, Charles, third down. Any chance you're throwing? I don't think so. I think you got to keep the clock rolling here. And indeed, they will keep it on the ground. And he is going to have the first down, and that is going to suck the life right out of this crowd. It's a gain of eight there, and that should be enough to seal the victory. It's always been funny to me, Brandon, when coaches always talk about on hot days like the one we have here, oh, it's hot for both teams. But when one team has the advantage, when one team is running the ball really well and closing things out, it's hotter for the defensive side, and they sag a lot quicker. Yeah, they say the dog days of August, the heat we're seeing here today, dog days of September, and the advantage right now on the offensive side. Come on. 
So the final seconds tick away in this Baltimore victory. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last points of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was, it all came together in the second half, and no points were allowed. That's a great way to close them out. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon, everyone, as we say so long from Denver.